All right, welcome to the final video of the set review. We've made it to Haven, and we're also gonna be doing neutral craft in this one. I know it just says Haven right now on the set review image or whatever, but we'll get there. Um, if you, okay, I don't know. If you're starting with Haven, uh, you know, welcome, Haven Warrior. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> actually, there are actually some cool Haven stuff here we'll be talking about. But anyway, either way, I'm here joined with Presha and Captain Top 8, you know, Grand Showdown, all that stuff. I, I mean, you can watch the other videos. I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> Champion of the world, baby. Top yeah, eight yeah. Grand Showdown, amazing performance <laughs> by Captain. He uh, riveted everyone off stream by getting hit <laughs> in the face with three fortes. <laughs> exactly. All right. I rating. did my best, guys. <laughs> rating Geek. I mean, you should have known those fortes were coming, man. No. <laughs> Earth right, bro. You yeah. I'm I, I told him to not do that. I told him to really do not do that. Oh, man. Five minutes before the event, I decided yeah. not to make the bad decision. Yeah. Oh, all right. Rating key guys here. Uh, there you go. Moving on here. We got this five drop three five Kaede Takagaki Ward at the start of your in phase. If your leader is health is five or less, give your leader a plus five and draw a card. Fanfare select an enemy far on the field and banish it. Activate one play point and lesson. Um, give this follower our uh, damn. Could we have had this card in our deck in our Umineko deck? I know. This would have been such a turn six follow up. Oh my god! Anyway, yeah, this card's pretty good. This is like the best yeah. flip off Wilbert, and then it starts making the gears turn and go like, maybe we just cut Wilbert and we don't play bad cards. We just play. Bad cards. <laughs> um, this card's really good. This is a really good card. Yeah, I I, I kind of like everything about this card. It just, yeah, hey, one one set too late for us, Prussia. Yeah, for real. Yeah. What are we rating it? I, I I don't know where we're we're at on this. What about you, Captain? How I, how are you feeling about this? I mean, it's really solid. It's just by the time that you're actually going to be getting that heal five, is the heal five going to matter? I uh, I mean, it's a ward, so it's uh, you're technically healing like ten, I guess. Yeah, I, I, the fanfare too is like the big thing. You got to present a body on the board while also like just banishing something, which feels really powerful. Yeah. yeah. If you have to protect this for one extra play point, it's not the worst in the world giving it aura, but yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a really solid card. It, what is this like? I think it's the one like transcendent card from from for Haven for this set. Like yeah. I almost I don't want to give it an S because it just maybe an A. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to give it an the, S because it doesn't seem that busted, but it it is it's just it, all around. It's just like. You know. Give that abyss legendary an S. This has to be an S. This has to be yeah. an S. The, the, I guess, the thing yeah. that I kind of the thing that I kind of like about this too is it's like turn six you can play this and give it aura and you can just kind of let the Kuan players stare at it and not be able to do anything with it until their Kuan turn unless they want to use a board wipe for one card. But what's going on with this <sighs> here? I think it's really good. Yeah. All right, moving on. All righty. We do. No, this is. There's no way we. Me and Prussia have just talked at length. Yeah, about we. This yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> three, three, three. Uh, in another universe, we talked about this card. Uh, three, <laughs> three, three, three. Uh, Shin Sato, Evo for six. Fanfare draw card. Uh, on a ball, select the follower in your cemetery that originally cost eight or less play points and put it onto your field. And it is the P word. It is passion. Uh, this card's pretty sick because off the forest card, you just play this out of your hand. You draw a card. Um, that's like, for to me, mostly what it's going to be used for if it's played. And then, uh, you know, late, late game, you can get back one of your big boys. Um, and yeah, I think other than that, it's like, eh, it's just like, it's just card draw. It's a three, three, three draw card. You know, I, I kind of like the idea of this card in a sense, too, where like if you're going second, you play this on three. It's just like you have to answer this. Otherwise, some scary stuff could potentially happen. Um, yeah, yeah, listen, listen, I'm playing I'm playing for my Disneyland trip. All right. Yeah. Uh, but you got to get into the graveyard, too. You have to complete yeah. the quest. In, like, listen, I will yeah. complete that quest to destroy some people at locals with this card. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, it, 
card just seems like I like that it draws. It's a three drop that can come into play as well because uh, it what it helps with that other card that just summons three drops for passion, right? Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. Yeah, <sighs> yeah if, I feel like for the most part, if you, if you were to run this, this might more or less be like the the last card or two that you would add because um, you're you're really only ever going to run one Evo of it. Yeah, and prior to you being able to bring out the a cost it's not doing much the draw is nice but it's not so you're, you don't want to see it till turn nine i feel yeah i mean there there are a lot of like cool uh, cemetery setups in this set like the you know scar two cards that make something cost four or whatever but it's still like it's still kind of a christmasy dreamland i feel like uh is this yeah, i mean but by the time you play this, you're going to have an eight cost that you want to play. Yeah. I feel especially in passion. It's just that's turn nine as well. So. Yeah. Am I, am I giving this D for Disneyland? I was, yeah, was going to give it a B. <laughs> dream. <laughs> yeah, for the dream. We're going to give it a B. Wow, that's really yeah. solid. Uh, it does what it wants to do and it does it well. You know what? I'll, I'll I'll give it I'll give it the C. I, I yeah, I think I'm fine with that. It, it just I think Captain's right on a lot of things. It's like a two one in in a lot of lists, especially for passion, extra range on the finishing abilities and stuff like that. So I could see it for sure. All right, next card. All right, next card is Nana Abe. It is a three cost three two. Uh, it evolves for one. Uh, and fanfare, look at the top five cards of your deck. You may reveal an amulet from among them and add it to your hand. Put the remaining cards on the bottom of your deck in any order. Uh, on Evolve, it becomes a 4-3. Uh, on Evolve, you may put an amulet that originally costs three or less play points from your hand onto your field. This is a interesting card since it's it's not specific to Idolmaster. Um, but Elena's I back, have baby. to apologize. <laughs> yeah, I have to apologize. I don't know what good three amp cost well, amulets so, there are. So this this card and there's another amulet card uh, later on basically made this really cool Haven deck. It's basically Control Haven, but you play Kagia and you play a bunch of amulets. Um, and this is definitely the key card to it because you, mm -hmm. you regain a lot of your tempo that you lose from playing. I mean, you don't play Elena in it, but from playing down your life. Amulets and stuff. Ancient yeah. protectors and your other things, you know. And there's actually a lot of good three-drop amulets. You know, you have Arya's, you have um, the uh, the Ancient Amplifier, the one that summons the Mystic Artifact. Yeah. Um, so this actually saw, uh, you know, kind of like a roguish type deck, but actually saw some results. And I was really interested. That's actually how I started to think of, of our, or, you know, the deck we played was I saw this deck and I was like, man, I think Haven could have some stuff because they were playing Marwin. And mm -hmm. I was thinking about could we play, you know, some sort of, you know, Kage. And then I was like, okay, let's just do the float stuff. Um, but it's actually pretty cool. And it's one of the few, like, um, Idolmaster stuff that, like, escapes the Idolmaster, you know? It goes to a real, uh, the real craft, you know? Yeah. And actually see some success. So I don't think it's like an S or even an A, just because I don't I don't think the deck is that good, but it's it's a cool deck. It's an interesting deck in the meta. Is, is there any amulets in Idol Master that are really worth grabbing off yeah, of this? There's there's one there's one coming up. In, in yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm probably gonna give this a B. Yeah. Mm. I think I'm going to give it a C. It definitely is a yeah. playmaker for sure, though. All right. Next card. Uh, is this me? I yeah. think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we got a five drop, five, five. Akane, Hino, rush, assail, strike, deal two damage to each enemy leader. Activate two play points in one lesson. Give this fall over storm. Interesting. Rush and assail. Both really good keywords. And strike, deal two damage. I'm kind. Of, I'm kind of like. I'm kind. Of, I'm kind of liking this card, but two play points to give it storm feels kind of rough. So we're playing seven to do five damage when I'm paying five to do four with seven. Uno Mirage. It's seven for seven. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, I forgot. I, I my my brain said the two damage was two enemy uh, enemy followers. 
Seven for seven. That's not bad. We needed that. Well, we, why didn't we have this last seven? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of stuff I know. I know, I know, I know. It's pretty good curse. Uh, true. I, I kind of like this car, but I, I'm not sure if it's ever going to really find its like place or whatever. It, like text wise, it seems okay. Exist in modern Shadowverse. Yeah. It, it just doesn't do enough. It's not broken enough. At the end of the day, isn't those just Gilgamesh with a sail? Uh, Gilgamesh only no, hits. He's a six, six. six. My bad. Yeah. My bad. I was like, Gilgamesh ain't that good. <laughs> it's solid. It does. It's 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 a card that does exactly what you want it to do. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Next card here. This is the amulet we were talking about. Yeah, the uh, three mana white lily of the classroom. Fanfare, give your leader plus two health and draw a card. Quick activate two play points, engage this card, put this card into the cemetery. Select an idol master follower in your cemetery and add it to your hand. So yeah, this is like one of the, you know, key cards you use with the three drop to play, you know, play it out. Uh, heals you, draw a card. It's very similar to the globe. Um, I think uh, the good thing is there are other better amulets that just exist in Haven that you'd want to play, but you still play this because it's like, hey, uh, you know, heal you, draw a card, and then you get uh, her back. You get the, um, you know, the, the one that, you know, looks for an amulet and plays down an amulet again back. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Adds some good consistency to the deck. Uh, but other than that, I mean, never, ever going to be played outside of that specific deck, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely doesn't feel like a cool card at all. So it's Oh, I just, oh my gosh, bro. Oh, <laughs> it is cool. Oh my god. It, it's cool. <laughs> what is wrong with them? Uh, yeah, I thinking of it as that consistency card, I just think it it's something that you always want to consider. It, there's not there's never a this is going to be the game uh, card that makes the deck, but it's nice. Yeah. Next card here. Uh, so this is Risa Matoba. It is a three drop two two uh, fanfare. Look, the top three cards of your deck. You may put a idol master follower that originally cost two or less play points onto your field. Uh, put the remaining cards on the bottom of your deck in any order. So this is kind of fulfilling what we need with passion of trying to put a bunch of bodies onto the board. Um, I just, it being a two, two and only playing another two cost doesn't really seem like it accomplishes as much as we want it to do. Maybe if there's another card that plays it like the, uh, the seven drop dragon card, but it by itself doesn't really do much. It feels like. It's just worse by like a large margin, Pompous Princess. Yeah. And I swore to never play Pompous Princess ever again after <laughs> I whiffed with 18 one drops in the deck. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do I want to give this F? Uh, yeah. I'm just, I feel like I am dreaming in or dreaming if I'm going to actually hit on this card or not. It's only three also, which is like the roughest part. Yeah, oh, I'm going to give it a D. I do believe that there are other passion cards that are really good about playing out another follower. So, if it, you know, worst case scenario, it hits this and summons a third one. You're you're filling your board and it's potentially fairly early that you're doing it. So I, I think it could be good. Yeah, not good, but useful. Yeah. All right. Next card here is a two drop two two that evos into a three three Haru Yuki. Evolves for one, and then fanfare. If Risa Matoba is on your field, give this flower plus one, one plus one plus one, and rush on evolve gear leader to health. So this is clearly the card that combos with the last card we saw, right? It's Risa, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I think I'm good on this card. We can move on. This is just unicorn girl, right? Basically, except outside. she doesn't swing for it at all. True. Eh. At least she's uh, Unic Unica's reusable. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, the biggest F ever. Yeah, if the other card's an F or yeah. D or F, then this Curious. is dependent on it. Curious. All right, next card. 
Psychic Maiden. I forgot about this one. This is another really good amulet for this, like, amulet deck. Three mana. Banish an uh, enemy father on the field of four defense or less. Or, well, yeah, and banish it. Uh, activate five play points. Engage this card. Put this card into your cemetery. Select enemy father on the field and banish it. This card is really sick because you basically get two removals, right? And uh, the five comes pretty, you know, that's pretty expensive. And uh, one of the reasons why the deck isn't, like, amazing is because, you know, uh, they're going to be playing two to three things on you, and you are basically killing, you're basically going one for one uh, on a lot of these turns. Uh, but it's uh, pretty cool in this, you know, type of deck. And adds something, you know, adds an amulet that we kind of needed because, you know, death, death sentence is, like, you know, bottom five, bottom ten card ever printed, so... You know, this is like way better than that sentence. Yeah, I don't really have much to add. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the card. Banish is really good, especially if it hits the four defense. I'm gonna give this a B. Yeah. Am I giving this a B? Yeah, B for banish. The, the thing, Let's go. <laughs> the, the the thing pushing me to see is just the five cost on the. Yeah, engage. the second part is the part that makes it more awkward for me. But I know like Haven has access to like if they need to remove this to make it room on the board, they have like uh, dark offering or whatever. I guess so. Uh, we rated this one already. Moving on, rating this one already as well. Moving on, next card here. Uh, oh, this is me. Yeah, uh, this is Layla. This is a four drop four four that evolves for one uh, on evolve. You search your deck for a cool follower and a passion follower. Reveal them and add them to your hand. Uh, this is something that we talked about a little bit before. Uh, it's pretty playable and cool. And unfortunately for Prussia, it does make uh, Mio Honda at least a little bit more playable <laughs> because it's it's something that you can search out alongside your cool follower, whether that's you know your Rin Shibuya or something. Um, it, it's pretty decent. It makes every patch and follower better, but yeah, yeah. But also Mio Honda. True yes, Mio Honda M for <laughs> Mio Honda. All right. <laughs> Uh, I, I I feel like this is so specific and it comes so late. I, I it's still yeah. like a consistency card in that sense, but I, I think I, I could see it being played, so I, I can give it. I'm gonna give it the D treatment, but it, honestly, I, I almost feel like it's closer to F. Because even yeah, because because like even in set two, Avent Blader was really slow, you know. Mm -hmm. And this is this is basically the exact same as Avent Blader. Um, and you have like a wider variety of cards you can search because Avid Blade was only officers, and you're basically only getting uh, novice two novice troopers or novice trooper quick later. Uh, but I just, I mean, I just don't think of five mana five five search two cards as like playable anymore against unless it's against really slow decks because you're like, you know, okay, let's say you, you know, you, 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 you know, tutor uh, Shibuya, you know, Rin Shibuya, and uh, he. Uh, she who shall not be named. And then you're like sacrificing so much tempo on that turn to get like the six damage storm the next turn that it's like, mm -hmm. I'd rather just play a good turn five play, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I think I'm going to give it a D though. Cause I can see some applications. I think also outside of just, uh, you know, pure cool, like uh, the cool combo deck is it. Uh, this card is really good in. Um, Cause there's a couple, you know, passion slash cards. Uh, so I'm going to give it a D, but I wouldn't be shocked if it's played. I just think it's way too slow. And now maybe like, maybe cool, you, you know, maybe cool is better as like more of a mid range deck because you have like the, the Cerberus, you have the seven drop. Um, and maybe we don't need to go so full all in. And then maybe I could see this card, uh, being a little more interesting, but, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see. Yeah, I the the thing that I do like about this too is it does if you wanted to play like the the Mio Honda and Rin and Uzuki combo, this gets you two of those pieces uh, prior to your turn eight, which is kind of where we talked about that being a fully playable thing. Um, the issue is it's not grabbing the Uzuki, which would search the third one, which makes it sad, but. I think I would also go with D. It just it's really dependent on you playing passion followers, I think. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, there's only two cards left, but they've already been rated, so we'll just go over them really quick. Here is Sinai, which obviously Pressure and I enjoyed a lot in Captain as well. Uh, this is what made us hype for Passion a little bit as well. And then we got uh, another Acolyte Slight uh, that heals for three instead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that concludes Haven. We're moving on to Neutral here. There's only a couple cards left here. So the first card coming up here is New Generations. It's a 10 drop 5-5. Five, five. When playing this card, banish three cute cards, three cool cards, and three passion cards from your cemetery. This card costs nine less to play. Storm, Bane, Ward. Um, I think I've seen some match videos with this a long time ago which was really funny watching them trying to get this off. And even in those match videos, I think it was on knowledge channel. They didn't even get it off. <laughs> so, right. so, uh, card is, uh, S tier. Cause I will lose to this card at locals for some reason, but F tier yeah, everywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, any random game, my, my opponent pulls out this deck. I will lose to it. 100%. I will brick as hard as possible so they can do this. Yeah. They, they definitely want it to be something that can happen because they made very specific cards for it, but it's not it's not happening. Yeah. Truly, the Disneyland dream is there. It does say passion. True. All right. New wave. Six mana, seven, seven. Fanfare. Lesson five. Destroy each enemy card on the field. I like this card a lot. I think this card is pretty sick. Um, it honestly kind of makes me wonder, like, I mean, we're playing the Storm Girl for eight in Passion, but like, is this maybe like a side, you know, you know, side, you know, card we can think about? Because it's, uh, I, you know, I, basically does the same thing, but it doesn't have Storm, you know, comes down early, overstated. It, it's the thing about this card, I think, is just it depends completely on what kind of meta you're facing into. Like, if we're playing against yeah. Forest and they're building wide boards constantly, on six, we dropping this probably feels completely fine if we still have the five lessons. Into all the other matchups, aggro matchups, if they have a five card board, we've probably lost the game. <laughs> if, well, not if we have this in hand. I <laughs> built yeah, by, by six. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, I hope we win first that game then. But uh, yeah, you choose uh, second all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. clearly. Uh, and then yeah. um, Kuan, this doesn't do anything really. It doesn't protect us. Like may, they might have some board stuff. We clear their board, and then they're like, "Okay, cool. Here's my like two Kuans and the D shift, and we've lost the game." That's the only awkward about this part. I think if if there was a different meta out there, this card could possibly be like worth actually teching with. But I think just the meta we're in, it doesn't ha can't find a home. This is probably cute's like one chance to be good. Well, that that's a that is a good point to bring up, right? Because this is gonna get pulled off of the cute stuff, right? And this comes in and just blows up your opponent's board, and now you have this like really big board that they have to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next turn, you get the follow up with like the you know the seven mana bring stuff back you know from the graveyard. And yeah, stuff, uh, and and you just like oh no, but you can't because she uses things. No, yeah. no, no, it's only on no, no, it's only on the heal three, so we just don't care about that. Uh, yeah, but there's there's definitely other cards that are using your lessons early. Uh, I don't I don't necessarily know if cute is one of those decks, but like it it almost feels like you're required to run of one of the upcoming cards that makes more magic items for you just because it's turn six and you know, you're also looking for, I guess, a more opportune time uh, cause you're not going to just drop this on six on an empty board and wipe and cast these. So yeah. it's, <sighs> I think the goal to me, to... it's uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say. I think the goal is to make a deck where we're not eating our tokens, like uh, you know, before turn six. Which I mean, honestly, there's actually a lot of cards that don't eat the tokens, which is kind of surprising. Yeah. Um. But yeah, definitely. I mean, this is definitely the uh, Kyoko deck, the, the the Sword Legend, you know, deck. Uh -huh. This like control, you know, board wipe stuff. You know, I I could see. I I could I could definitely see something happening like this maybe yeah, I, I i think there is potential there i think at the end of the day the meta and like unless there's like some crazy people that are going to come up with a perfect 40 i feel like this card is just like very very small potential um and if you find the perfect 40 and then it might be really good if you don't i think in the current meta it just feels like you're never gonna 
going to get the payoff because the only reason you're playing this card is for the fanfare. The the other thing with this is this can technically be your ninth card that you discard that lets you play new generations because it can count as any one of those oh, yeah. three that you're doing. Yeah. So that's true. That's true. Yeah. What are you reading, Impression? Uh, I was looking like through all the old uh, cute cards. Uh, I'm gonna give it a C, just cause uh, I I just think an effect like this has a lot of potential, and yeah. we have like this whole archetype that seems terrible, but like maybe this is like just maybe it has like 37 good cards and then this, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I, I definitely agree. It, it has potential. I mean, especially with we were seeing Crimson Meteor Storm just do so much work last set. Yeah. I, being able to destroy everything is just it's a good it's always going to be relevant. Yeah. All right. Next card here. The next card here is the first of many trainers. It is the master trainer is a eight cost four four. Uh, fanfare put five magic items into your EX area and then recover four play points. I just I'm not sure how relevant getting more magic items are having gone through a lot of the list here again I think we were noticing it was like one or two magic items get used in the early game and then one big card will use like two or three at a time yeah this being your top end to recover it and then potentially play something else doesn't seem like it accomplishes anything that you want it to do and it definitely doesn't solve any problems that the decks might have yeah i'm only seeing this as like a really good swing turn of like you're at 10 play points you play this after you use all your to ex things because you played the six drop we just saw into playing this and then you have six points left over to play the six drop again to clear out their board yeah. but like <laughs> yeah and I, I i'm not i'm not seeing it All right, next card. Uh, we got a four drop four four veteran trainer fanfare. Put two magic items into your ex area. Uh, really straightforward. Stats are kind this of is the limited. same card. Yeah, I, there's no real reason we need to be getting more ex tokens. Really, I feel like you. Do you think we ever actually need more than five? Did we uh, have any followers that play out a idol master card rather than like a cute passion or cool? Um, I can't remember at all. Does the that's a passion? Does the that's a oh the um the um the the dragon girl? But she can't get she. It. It's a three cost and a one yeah, cost, unfortunately. Yeah. There you go. I'll help you guys like, out. If, if she was a three cost, I could see it being <laughs> a lot better. But it, yeah, this is too expensive for what it does. And again, you don't really need more magic items, I feel. Yeah. All right. This is uh, not the correct translation. This is I, not I, the correct uh, translation. So Sorry. I, so I'll, I'll read the card. No, no, so yeah. Uh, two and two, three trainer. Fan first, select another idol master, uh, Cinderella girl follower on your field. Give it Bane or Drain. Yeah. Can I don't want to be obnoxious. <laughs> be for I Bane? Is, I, think this, I think this card is good. I think this card is really good. I think this card is better than another certain two drop. Um, I think uh, this being a fighter, this buffing your... Uh, other thing, it also like edges the mirror match where you can get some healing, um, and it, I feel like it's just pretty flexible. And it's just a vanilla. Um, I think is a pretty pretty strong. I like it a lot. Um, but maybe I'm just overrating this. But like, I just really value in this cool deck us going. Okay, you know, just playing on curve, playing on curve, and then just getting these extra effects for like for basically nothing, you know, and just, you know, outvaluing the opponent because of that, because we're just, oh, well, 
you know, here's my drain, here's my whatever, you know, if we play the one drop. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it, like, it, even in aggro cool, like, you play the one drop, they don't answer it, you have this 3-1 on the board, you play it, you gain the drain, and, like, you lose the 3-1 for yeah. playing this, though, but you heal 3, which is pretty so, big in the mirror. Yeah. Because you're going for yeah. and you like, and you're, like, you know, 3 ahead of them now. Yeah, I, I can kind of see it, and I also can't see it at the same time, like, <laughs> You're kind of you're kind of convincing me a little bit. I'll I'll rate it a little higher than I thought I was originally going to give it. I'll give it a C um, to see how it does. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. but yeah, I I mean dr I think drain is like such a interesting keyword that we haven't got to play around with as much. And then Bane, obviously, we all know it's good. So yeah, yeah. I I, f I feel like it's it's kind of one of those cards again that in the mirror this is going to make the difference, but in a lot of other matchups, it's a card you don't want to see. I mean, even in Kuon, healing matters a lot in Kuon, especially in like a matchup like this, where they don't really have a lot of time to be like swinging face and stuff, right? Because a lot of their mana and stuff is going to be, you know, destroying stuff. You know, if you can get over mm -hmm. that 23 threshold, it's pretty, pretty good, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, with, with the Kuan versus uh, Cool, is Kuan more floating compared to like this last set where it was trying to use a lot of its stuff? I don't know. I, I, I would imagine they just have to kill as many things as possible. Yeah, so every I, turn. I assume, yeah, so I'd assume that's a myriad of, you know, floating. Yeah, it's either I, I, floating like, or they play like Curse Craft to clear up the board. And yeah. like those are like the pro only proactive plays, right? Otherwise, they just float everything until. Insta. Yeah, because yeah, kind of it, why... oh, I was just gonna say it feels to me like in that matchup, this ends up just being a two a, a, a fighter, uh, because the other thing gets gotten rid of. Which, I mean, at the end of the day, you're happy that this is still there to swing, but uh, the other thing might have provided more value otherwise. Yeah, I mean, I I do think though, like we've noticed that there's like not that many two drops, like in in you know in cool like you know we have the mio we have the luminous knight and we have the deal two damage you know um and i think being a fighter is like pretty relevant like being a fighter that is playable in the deck in this type of deck is really strong and yeah just being able to curve it being like pretty applicable in every other you know point in the game uh and yeah also just being able to, you know, edge the mirror match, which is going to be a popular match, you know, or, or yeah, because uh, yeah, it, it doesn't, and and I like I like it because it it's really good in the mirror match, and then it also like has minimal but some value in Kuan, which is the second most you know, played deck. So yeah, um, I I like it a lot, mostly just because we just do not have a lot of two drops for cool. I I think we do have. I thought we had like just two of them that were in the uh starter deck itself so that was six cards and then we also saw the uh second now right so that's oh, that's already yeah, like evil. i guess i'm not thinking about like the evo card the yuki me yeah 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 i'm not i'm not really considering that um just because like it's it's a two drop evo but um mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess I more mean like actual, you know, like going for his two drops, you know. Yeah. All right. I think that's kind of all we could say about that card. The final card we've already seen before in a prior uh, deck. We This was our rating. Uh, solid card all around. Uh, I think that it, do you guys want to add anything about this card? Otherwise, we're closing this out. It's uh, it's way more sick after, you know, I've read all the cards. I, I, I yeah, like I, 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 especially in the the the. Uh, combo version i think that this has a lot more value there because you're playing so many other things it has something that's going to give that plus one too yeah all right that closes this out guys thanks for joining as always um you know once again thank you pressure thank you captain uh top eight champion of the grand showdown in my heart <laughs> uh you know thank you guys both of you for joining world championship yeah, I better see yeah, how it worlds this year. For, thank, thanks for having us. I appreciate it. Yep. It's fun to talk, talk uh, about all these uh, cards and stuff. And uh, yeah, Mio Honda is my goat.
Yeah, I'm glad <laughs> to be here. Glad to hear that. Um, it's, it's, that's I, I was here drop, just to convince drop. Prussia of this. The six drop. <laughs> yep, we gotta yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> Listen, we gotta keep the agenda pressure, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we kept it with Shingo Windy. We kept it with Bad B Kappa. We're now moving we, on to Mio. Mio Hell yeah. All right. I'm buying out Mio Honda day one. Trust Insane guys. Premium foils like that one guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, on the, the Farias. That was funny. Oh, man. All right, guys, with that being said, thank you so much for making it this far. If you did make it this far and you're not subscribed, what the hell are you doing? Go ahead and subscribe and, you know, drop a like, follow, all that other weird stuff. Um, it really, you know, keeps me motivated to keep doing content like this. And, you know, since this is the last video, truly thank you, Captain and Pressure, for being here. I, as much as I tear out my, like, hair and stuff doing these set reviews, uh, I, I always have fun when I have friends like you guys around to do this stuff with. So thank you so much. For sure, for sure. I'm Thanks so for having us. Not play this meta. <laughs> we'll Don't actually. worry, it's, it, it's only a month. It's only a month. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> All right. With that being said, guys, we'll see you guys later. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.